So it should be making sure the background view is the right height of the casting shadow. Um, if you're tight, let's just say uh, your material is too tight. Make sure that shadow is off while it's right. Boom! All right. All right. So, with shadows, I've done this lots of times where it's like I have shadows on and I'm not getting a shadow. So, the, the tricky thing is there's a bunch of things that will get in the way of whether or not it's whether or not it's casting a shadow. First thing is, is do you have, like in, in regular natural world, like is your setup set up to cast shadows? Like do you have a light? Is the light hitting the thing and, and hitting the background? Like is it, sometimes when people are, are like, it's not casting a shadow, I'm like, well, it's because your light is pointing like over there, you know? Or it's just not set up to cast a shadow. But meticulously, there's three places to look. The light itself has a place where cast shadows needs to be turned on. So the light, if the light doesn't have cast shadows set to on, you're not going to get a shadow. If your thing that's casting shadows, like in this case it's the word, if that doesn't have under material options cast shadows on, you won't get shadows. So it's got to be on. And then the background, I don't think the background matters. Um, I, I think suppose maybe if you have under material options on the background, cast shadows, uh, accept shadows, maybe if you See, I turn accept shadows off and it does a weird thing like, oh there, see, so if accept shadows is off, it won't accept a shadow. But it's usually set by, by a, on by default. So if you've got a shadow, cool. Watch what happens if you've got a shadow and you take your light uh, in this different view. I'm just going to grab the light by like the X handle. If you move the X handle, look what happens. It's a spotlight, so it's like a circle. So the circle moves across the word, and it also pushes the shadow. See that? Isn't that kind of cool? So you could keyframe that, right? Like you could keyframe the light to move. So here's a little demo I'm going to do. I'll pull back to zero, take my light, open up my transform controls, and I'll say, all right, you know what it is? It's, it's position. I'm going to keyframe position of the light. So I'm going to turn on keyframing of position and move forward in time and move it by just grabbing the X arrow and pulling it across the word. All right, so if I scrub through here, I've got this thing that's like a, it's like a flashlight going across, and it makes the, the shadow move. And I'm also going to here at uh, zero, I'm going to move it further in this direction, so it does like a total pan. And then can you, you can obviously keyframe the light. That's what I'm doing right now. Oh, I'm keep, like right now what's happening is I'm just keyframing the light to pan across. Now, interesting thing, when you, when you uh, turn on keyframing for position, it also pops on automatically point of interest. And what that does is that point of interest is the, this is my light, right? So I'm, I'm keyframing along the X axis, which is this red arrow. So I'm just moving the light. It's like the light is on a little dolly wagon, moving it. So I'm moving it across like that. And then this is the point of interest. So the, the light and the point of interest are moving together. But you can keyframe the point of interest separately if you wanted to, right? So what you could do is like, if I, what that is is, if I left the uh, position alone, it's like the light is on stand, and keyframing the point of interest makes it the light um, swivel, right? So it's like it's on a stand and you've got a handle on it, you're swiveling the light, which is, would make a similar thing to this, but it would sweep. So the shadow would be different. Right, like having holding the light and moving sideways like this is makes the shadow move parallel. And if I have light like this and I sweep the light on a on a pivot, the circle of light is still going to move across the wall, but it's gonna, you know, it's moving on a, it's moving on an axis. So really, it's uh, the 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 light is on a circular motion. It's not a pan, right? So slightly different, and you can keyframe them differently if you want. So you could do them together or separate. Right now I'm just doing a pan to show you what happens with the shadow. Another thing you can do with the shadow is, uh, that shadow is super sharp and kind of intense, right? So if I wanted to light, if I, I could lighten the shadow or make it fuzzy, and this is a little counterintuitive, the way that you mess with, the way that you adjust a shadow is in the light. So you go in your light settings, right? If you go here to uh, layer light settings, and uh, here, shadow darkness. So it's at 100%, so it's like 100% black. If I wanted to lighten that shadow, I could pull it down and make it lighter. So that's a 75% shadow darkness. 
taking a while for my After Effects to catch up with life. Doesn't like it. And then Shadow Diffusion is the is the uh, how fuzzy it is. So I can lighten it and I can make it kind of soft on the edge. Say okay. And see, to me, that looks more like a natural shadow. Like that looks kind of cool, right? Imagine if this blue were not just blue, like if that was a photograph, or if it was video. Like I could that this layer. I can't see it because it's all opened up. Right? I could put in front of this blue instead of this blue medium solid. Actually, let's watch this. If I take this medium solid and pre-compose it, say layer, pre-compose. What it's going to do is it's going to take that blue and put it in an envelope, and I'll call this just background. Okay, so I've got this comp, move all attributes into there, called background, and i got to turn on the 3D for it. And why did it do that? Huh. Alright, so when I pre-composed it, it came in like this. It, it obliterated the word, which is weird because it's behind it. So I have to make it three-dimensional, and then I have to do this thing this little sunshine thing which makes it collapse transformations. All right, so it looks the same, but what this does is this background, I could put, if I put something in here, it's like an envelope or like a picture frame, I can put a picture in there, right? So I'm just gonna go grab a random, random picture. I'll go get something I had before like video. Uh, go file, import, file, and I know I have like video I downloaded in my folder for a background, like what, what did I have? Like time-lapse sky was one of my things, wasn't it? Where is it? Butterfly, cut bat, puppet, stargate, stargazer. This is dark, so it might not look too good. I thought I had something that was like clouds. <clears throat> Let's see what this looks like. So here's stargazer. I'm going to put it in on top of the blue and slide it to where I've got something to look at. Oh, here we go. Here's this moon coming up, right? So this stargazer is in front of the blue solid now. So if I go to 3D demo, it's it's in there. And what's weird is my light. I'm trying to show you how the light should shine on like this video is in that background. Oh. Is that Do you have to approve like no, over here, see when I put it inside this comp, I didn't enable 3D for it. So I gotta enable 3D inside the comp and then come back here. Now it's here. And why does it do that? I'm like trying to show you something and having it go bonkers. What's up? Why? Hold on. Hmm. Oh, 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 look, it's, now look, it's in front, maybe, but one thing at a time. Here's my, here's the blue background, and here's the moon thing, so push the moon thing back so it's even with that, and then check on it here. There you go. So what I'm getting is, the word is casting shadow on that moon video. See it? Let's preview it. To see it, then the moon video should be moving. Doesn't look like it is though. Wonder why. Hold on. Background. No, no. It's just moving really slow. It's moving. Here, I'm going to move it to where the clouds are. All right, let's preview this. Preview, I'm gonna make my work area not so big. Let's change this to one view. Whoa, did I just kill After Effects? Look at that. Ha! The pop, so it didn't like that. All right, so, yeah, one way to make After Effects crash is demand too much of it with 3D. It doesn't happen a lot. In fact, it hardly ever happens, that's why. But if you think about it, I'm asking it to do a lot. I'm, I've got video pre-composed, right? I've got 3D, I've got a light. 
There's not that much more I can do. The only the only thing I can do more is add more video. That would be demanding of it, right? Or a camera. But I'm pretty much at the limits of like I'm you know, After Effects is on the bench at the gym and I'm just putting on like five hundred pound weights. Like another one and another one and another one. And it's just like, oh forget it. I can't do I can't lift this. So bam, just shuts down. So, <laughs> No, no, it's the opposite, right? So let's see if it... Now, what will happen now is probably... Um, it should be fine or not. Where is it? You lost it recently. Did I save it? Tell me I didn't save it. I made a new project, didn't I? Didn't I call it 3D Demo? Hold on. File. This is going to be entertaining on the Tegrity when you watch it because it's just me like, talk, like talking through a, a crash. Wait, where is it? What happened? Uh, yeah, I know it quit unexpectedly. I was not expecting it. Reopen. 3D type, etc. A minute ago. Look, last opened a minute ago. Uh, I'm going to go to this one. Okay, good. There it is. So this is what I want to preview because I want to show you and talk about it. Uh, now, pull it back to the beginning. Cross my fingers, hit preview. It should be fine now. I think it was just uh, I was moving really fast and asking it to do a lot of things in rapid succession. So that's pretty fast. It's only two seconds of animation. But you can see that I've got an animated video background of the clouds moving. And if you look closely... You can see that the shadow, there's, you know, that blue circle is actually a spotlight. And the spotlight's sweeping across. Think of it as like it's sweeping across a, a, a video, and it's lighting up the video, and the word is in front of it, and it's casting a shadow. All right? So the main thing you want to try to do is just, uh, I'm going to turn off that. Video, turn off the eyeball, come back here. Just see if you can get a light and um, a light casting shadow on a word and move the light. Just keyframe the light to move. Then the next thing you can do is play around with like, you can keyframe everything. You can keyframe the background, you can keyframe the word, right? So I've got the light moving now. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll, as the light's moving, I'm going to make it go slower because it's going pretty fast. So if I open up this light, and these keyframes here, this sweep of the light is only taking two seconds. So I'm going to take the, the second set of keyframes and move them out to make it take six seconds, just so it takes longer. It's slower. So it's the same movement. It's just going to take longer so I get a better look at it. So it's going to slowly do that. And then what I'll do is I'm going to mess around with the word. So here's the word. I'm going to play around with, like, maybe I'll scale it. So here's scale. If I set scale... I can't see it because I'm not looking at it. If I set scale to be small and move, whoops, I don't want to do that. And then have it scale up to be large. So what'll happen is as the light, as the light's moving across, the word is coming, it looks like it's coming towards us, but it's really just scaling up, it's growing. So that's scaling. I can also tilt it. So what I'll do is I'll come here to the middle and I'll say, hmm, what if I what if I do X rotation? It'll do this. The word will lay down. And if I the background is close enough that if I lay it all the way down, it'll start intersecting the background and disappearing. So I don't want that. So what I'll do is I'll have it go forward. So it's like flat, like that. That's kind of cool. Right? So I'm gonna set a keyframe there, X rotation, so it's laying down flat, and I'll pull that back to the beginning. And then here, I'll stand it up. So I'm going to make it go like that. Stand up. So what happens is as the light sweeps across, it's going to go from laying down flat to coming up. And the shadow is going to move accordingly. All right? just, to, just to play around with like what, what the 3D controls are. Cool. Can I show you a, a neat example of how this is used in an actual movie? And then I'll let you play. Actually, I'm going to stop the integrity for now. Um, well, what I'll do, actually, I'll stop it after this. See if, see if this gets included in integrity. If I go to uh, YouTube.
Anybody ever see this movie, Stranger Than Fiction? Oh, yeah. It's a fun movie. Stranger Fiction intro. So, this doesn't have a... This doesn't have a whole lot of shadow, but it's type. It's it's exactly what we just did, moving things in three D space. Is this a commercial? I thought that was the movie. Yeah, I was like, look. Well, there is a scene. It's almost exactly yeah, like this. Go away! Oh, it's not gonna let me go away. All right, they know my. They know their customers. Fix the sound so it's coming through the house. What is it? Every weekday for twelve years. Harold would brush each of his 32 teeth 76 times. 38 times back and forth. 38 times up and down. Every weekday. So, I don't know if you can see on this blow out recording, but like, it's a good shadow right there. And one of the things I like about this is, so they have this like, comp of type set up. Hey, why'd you do that? And um, whenever there's a mirror, you see that they bothered to take this piece of art and put it in the mirror. So like when this moves, it also moves in the mirror. It's kind of cool. It's a nice touch. Like track the camera on that, basically? Um, you can parent them together. Is that what you mean? So that they move together? Yes. Yeah, I noticed that there was like a camera track tool in After Effects. Uh-huh. Yeah. That That's for something. It's similar but different. Because with this, you don't have a camera. You just have layers that are stuck together so when you move one the other one moves with it so what you would do is you'd build it like you'd you'd make this floral silk necktie thing and then you'd make a copy of it that's back in space you'd separate on the z-axis and then you'd parent them together so when you move one you move the other so it's like you know it's like it's like you have these two planes and when you move one they stick together and then you know you put something in between it it's pretty cool it's pretty architectural like here every weekday Harold would tie his tie in a single Windsor knot instead of the double, thereby saving up to 43 seconds. What? His wristwatch thought the single Windsor made his neck look fat, but said nothing. Every weekday for 12 years, Harold would run at a rate of nearly 50 That's motion tracking, so like what you can do is you can take anything, and like in this case they made a, a type animation, so that little calendar grid with the O2, like there's actually a lot going on in there. Like the calendar is kind of lighting up, and there's a there's a there's a little arc circle going around, right? So there's numbers, and that's a fair little that that's a neat little project right there. Like that's a little bit of a graphic design animated chunk, and so they made that just by itself in After Effects, and they took that, comped it, shrank it down, put it in a comp with this video of him running, and you can target motion tracking. So you can take this comp and say follow. And there's like a little crosshair, and it's sort of like uh, using a magic wand in Photoshop. You can say, follow this edge. You just pick an edge where you're like, see where this white turns to green right there? You've got to pick an edge where there's a difference in pixels and say, track that edge. When that edge moves, follow it. And so you take that thing and tell it, follow probably the top of his head. You know? So as he's running, it just follows him. Same thing with the toothbrushing, like when the toothbrush is going up and down, and the animation is moving with the toothbrush. They did motion tracking where they said, take this animation, follow the edge of this toothbrush on this video. So when the toothbrush in this video moves, this then we're going to move with it. Now you can do it, man sometimes it doesn't work so well and you have to go in and manually tweak it. But motion tracking is like, when you see it, it looks pretty beautiful, like here. Six blocks, barely catching the 817 chronic bus. His wristwatch would delight in the feeling of the crisp wind rushing over its face. Every weekday for 12 years, Harold would review 7.134 tax files as a senior agent for the Internal Revenue Service. Motion tracking. Oh, 
Just little things like masking to create depth, right? Like this starts out, this graphic is behind him, right? So they masked it so it's like, it just looks like it's behind him. And then the other one with the dishwashers in front of him kind of adds the sense of space like there's behind him and then in front. Harold would go to bed, placing his wristwatch to rest on the nightstand. That's the beginning of the movie. Pretty good movie. Um, but I always show that as an example of some fun, you know, it's basically exactly what we just did, just applied with some pretty hairy uh, accuracy. All right, where's my recording? What's that? Stranger than fiction. Yeah. 